moment when I saw all four of them stand up with notes. My dad had two pages of printed pages and props. I have nothing. So, and I also need to dispel a rumor because these guys are telling me to wrap it up. They're holding up the Chappelle box. Wrap it up. The bar is not going to open when I'm done, so I'm going to take my time. Uh, the first thing that I want to tell Jordan and Megan is to look around the room, look at all the friends, look at the family, feel the love, and soak this in. This night is going to go like this. You're going to have moments that you black out. It's not even going to be drinking induced, I promise you. It's just going to go like that. Soak this in. You will never have another moment in your life where y'all are the stars, y'all are the center of attention, and y'all deserve it. So take some of this in. Okay, well, I don't want to repeat a lot of the comments that were already said, but I do just want everyone to know that was a part of this, and that was a lot of the people in the room, how much it means to me, my family, and everyone up here, so thank you. The first thing I wanted to do was talk to everyone in this room, besides these two. I wanted to tell you guys, tell y'all from the South, I can say that, tell y'all, Thank you so much for being here. I, I didn't get married until I was 35. It's kind of the byproduct of a dad that's been married six times, so I took my time getting married. And during that time between 18 and 35, I probably went to about 50 weddings. And that is my 20s. You know, we're all struggling, we don't have any money, and I used to resent it at times. I'm like, I don't have any money for this. It's a waste of money, it's a cost. But when I finally got married, I started realizing it's an investment. It's an investment in the relationships, and anyone that will ever talk about relationships, whether it's husband, husband, wife, or whether it's friends, they only work when they're two-way. They only work when both parties feel like they're given more than 50%, right? And so to each and every one of you that are here, y'all are investing in them. So my hat goes off to you, and I really, really appreciate it, and I know they do too. Next, I want to talk about Megan. I could, I could sit here for an hour listing all of the adjectives that describe her, from intelligent, from educated, from ambitious, from athletic, more so than Jordan, to beautiful, <laughs> to all of these things, but I just want Megan to know how much you mean to my family and how absolutely impressed we have been with you from the moment that we met you and how just wonderful you are for Jordan. I also want you to know from conversations that I've had with him that you make him a better person. And that's such a testament to you because he tries so hard to be a better person because you deserve that. You know, so our family is so happy to have you just like I know your family is happy to have Jordan. And I just couldn't be happier for both of y'all. Next, for big boy here. I think that a lot of younger siblings have a paradigm that they cannot teach their older sibling anything. Well, I quickly want to dispel that, with, and this is not funny, by the way. I'm not about to make any jokes here. I'm talking purely from the heart. My kimono is open. I want Jordan to know that I have learned three very important things from him, and I quickly want to attempt to say what they are. Remember, the bar is not going to open when I get off the mic. Uh, the first thing that I learned from Jordan, and I think it's because he got it from his dad and my dad, is being selfless. I did not say selfish, which I've been accused of. I said selfless. Jordan is just the epitome of thinking of others. He thinks of his friends, he thinks of his wife, he thinks of his family. He's and again he gets it from his dad. I've never met a more selfless person than that guy over there. The good news is the apple didn't fall far from the tree. So Jordan, I you inspire me to be more selfless. The problem The problem is, I'm saying this in public and my wife's right there, so unfortunately now i got to be accountable, but that's all right. <laughs> the, um, the second thing I want to say about Jordan, though, is that he has taught me recently about hard work. If anyone knows Jordan, most of us just go to work and come home, right? We try to get home as fast as we can. In fact, I've got a pretty cush job, so I work from home frequently, which means like watching TV and stuff. Not Jordan. Jordan puts in his 12 hours. Jordan listens to podcasts while he goes to and from. Jordan goes to user groups, whatever those things are. I have no idea. He's always trying to get a certification, another degree. He's trying to start some businesses. He's surrounded by great people, but he's just always hustling. Not bustling, hustling. But Jordan just has inspired me to keep that drive going. 
And the one thing I know with Jordan is that you're definitely going to re receive the fruits of your labor. You know, we're so proud of who you are, not just personally, but professionally too. You know, very impressed. Third thing, I'm almost done. Third thing is Jordan's kindness. And that is definitely something that I can learn from Jordan. If anyone knows Jordan, especially going back to his middle school, high school years, he has always been kind. At a time when it was more popular to be cool than it was to be kind, Jordan never sacrificed who he is. And he always kept it real, meaning kept it from his heart. And he was always there for his friends. Again, it goes back to that selflessness part, but that is another thing that I have learned from you, and you try to make me a better person with your kindness, you know? So my hat goes off again. Um, I'm gonna end it, I promise I'm gonna end it. But I was at a funeral Tuesday, and I heard a really wonderful comment, and the comment was, there's three very powerful emotions. There's faith, there's hope, and there's love. And of course, love conquers all. So if any of you guys tonight want to talk about faith, you're surrounded by some great resources. You can talk to Dr. Obermeyer, Reverend Regan. If any of you guys want to talk about hope, you can talk to my mom. You can talk to my dad, or you can talk to my dog, Shannon, who's not here, but she's got the hope too. But if any of you guys want to talk about love, you can talk to these two. Because they have the love for all of us in here, and they definitely have the love for each other. And that's why I know they're going to be wonderful all the years of their life. So I'm finally done. Please raise your glasses and let's take a picture of Cheers.